Now let's start, talk a little bit about some barriers to trade, some of the significant things that make global marketplaces so difficult to navigate. Political considerations affect international business daily as governments enact tariffs, embargoes, or other trades, other types of trade resistance in response to political events. Unlike legal issues, political considerations are seldom written down and often change rapidly. Political unrest may create a hostile or even dangerous environment for foreign business. Political concerns may lead to a group of nations to form a cartel, a group of firms or nations that agrees to act as a monopoly and not compete with each other. This is done in order to generate competitive advantage in the world markets for that group. You're undoubtedly familiar with the oil cartel called OPEC and have seen firsthand how the cartel can impact on the prices of their products and services, which is oil prices. There are also social and cultural barriers. Most business people engaged in international trade underestimate the importance of social and cultural differences. But these differences can derail an important transaction. Research can help minimize the problems associated with social and cultural differences. Cultural differences include differences in spoken words and spoken language, written and spoken, Although, possible, although it's possible to translate words, the true meaning is sometimes misinterpreted or lost. Differences in appropriate body language, posture, facial expressions, and personal space must also be acknowledged. Family roles may differ in different societies. Many countries do not allow children to be used in advertising, for example. People of other nations often have a different perception of time. Americans value promptness, but others may see nothing wrong with starting a meeting a half an hour late. Nations and religious national and religious holidays and local customs must also be respected. Workers may expect a break at a certain time of day to observe religious rites, for example. Many nations use the metric system. The United States is the only exception. This lack of uniformity creates problems for both buyers and sellers. Then there are also technology barriers. Technological advances are creating additional global marketing opportunities. Along with opportunities, changing technologies can also create new challenges and competition. The U.S. market share of the personal computer market is dropping as new competitors emerge that are challenging U.S. PC makers. In fact, out of the top five global PC companies, Lenovo, Lenovo Hewlett Packard, Dell, Acer, and A A C ASUS, three of them are from Asian countries. On the other hand, Apple Inc.'s iPad and other tablet computer makers have already begun eroding market share of traditional personal computers, leading many to believe that personal computers have hit a maturity stage in their product life cycle. Sometimes infrastructure can also be a barrier. Many countries lack the technological infrastructure found in the United States. And some marketers are viewing such barriers as opportunities. For instance, marketers are targeting many countries, such as India and China, and some African countries when there are very few private phone lines. Citizens of these countries are turning instead to wireless communications through cell phones. Cell phone services are taking off in Africa. They differ, uh, they differ and offer a, fine, uh, of a viable alternative to landlines, which require infrastructure that is not always available in rural markets. Some of these various barriers and other sorts of trade frictions and issues like tariffs are being dealt with what are what are called trade agreements. In the next lecture, we'll go into some more detail about what some of these, these trade agreements are and how they work.